What's up you guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Brandon. Welcome everybody to the video. In this video, we are doing a part two of our best stocks to buy for passive income series. It's not really a series. I just did a video previously and it got really well recepted. We had a bunch of viewers asking for a part two for more dividend stocks. So that's what we have here. I've compiled up a list five more of my favorites. We got a couple US ones, but primarily Canadian stocks. To me, if you are someone that's looking to build up your forms of passive income, look no further than dividend stocks. That is just the simplest. It's just the easiest way for anybody out there to earn a form of passive income. You buy the stock and every three months, every quarter, you get a little kickback just for holding the stock. Very briefly, before we dive into things, the few things that I look for when selecting a dividend stock and what these companies kind of have to filter through to make my list. We obviously look for number one, the dividend yield, very important because this is how much passive income we're going to be earning relative to the money we invest. How much are we going to be getting back in dividends? That's the dividend yield. Secondly, we look for sustainability because you'll come across stocks with very high dividends, very attractive dividends, sometimes, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15%. And you think that is just a, you'd be crazy to pass up on that. But if a company's not able to sustain those dividends, if they can't afford to pay those out, if they go through trouble and they're not managing their earnings effectively, if the company doesn't make enough money to pay out those dividends, you risk, first of all, the possibility of those dividends getting cut or another very big possibility is you still get your dividend, but the share price of the company performs very poorly stocks down 60% because the company is just sucking. So number two is sustainability. We really want to make sure companies can afford to pay out these dividends. And then to me, the third and most apparent one following that is we do want to look back at the history. We want to look back at the track record because companies that have proven in the past, that they're able to pay out dividends often do a pretty good job of paying dividends out going forward. It actually goes to say a lot about the management team who's kind of running the ship and how they're able to manage their cash flows, their earnings. You got to be on top of things to have a company consistently and year after year making money and kicking that back to the shareholders. So all of the stocks today that we cover, I think are phenomenal choices. If you haven't already seen the previous videos that I've done on dividend stocks recently, we've got a big list of them. So if the stocks that you're thinking about aren't covered in this, you should go check the other ones out, see if they are, or if they're not, you can leave them down below and maybe I'll include them in the next video. But as always, if you enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. That really does help the channel click that thumbs up button. And of course we do have our investing Academy. If you're a beginner in Canada and you want courses training, you want help with the stock market, that's that first link down below, but getting on into stock. Number one, we're starting with an American choice. It is the company Lockheed Martin. The ticker that you'd be looking at here is LMT. And as of today, as of filming, we're looking at a 2.43% dividend. So very modest, very steady. The company's currently looking at a payout ratio of 41%, which means they're essentially paying out 41% of their earnings. The company makes X amount. They take 41% of that and kick that back to the shareholders. This is a very typical range for the company Lockheed Martin. They typically range between 40 to 50%. But this is of course, one of our massive aerospace and defense companies. So when you think to things like fighter jets and cargo planes, this company should pop to mind. And what's unique about the defense sector is that it is a very, very resilient sector. Hence why they're able to pay out such good dividends. It doesn't really go through too many cyclical cycles because at the end of the day, military still do their spending. The government still need to go out and uh, supply their army with the top quality, the newest technology. A fun fact about Lockheed Martin actually is that their largest customer, happens to be the US government. They have a lot of contracts running with them and that represents about 70% of their earnings. So you can think to why this company is so reliable. Well, they got a bit of backing from the government there. In terms of the dividend metrics, we've got a really, really steady one all around, which is why we'll kick off the video with this one. 19 years of consecutive growth. So these are annual increases. We see they're increasing it at a very healthy rate. Actually, the five year growth number is up in the double digits. At the end of the day, I think that this is an all around very unique company. 
they actually don't have too many competitors. And because they've really ingrained themselves in this defense segment of things, we would consider, we'd say that they're considered a company with a very wide moat. They really face competition from United Technologies. Raytheon is a company that we cover on the channel from time to time. You could look into a company like GE, uh, maybe Boeing as other aircraft uh, component parts. But at the end of the day, Lockheed Martin is one of those unique companies. And I think it's a very good one to look into for dividends. The stock currently trades today for $395 USD. So I know for our smaller traders that may be a little bit out of reach or something you don't want to pay, but I promise we got some lower priced stocks coming up after this. Stock number two, we're bouncing to a Canadian selection for dividend stocks. It's the company Atco. It's the Atco Group. And we're looking at the ticker for this one is ACO.X with the 4.3% dividend. So a very attractive starting yield. The payout ratio is right at about half of their earnings. 51% today. And Adco is the holding company. They're like the parents, the uh, the holding organization that deals with utility companies, uh, energy, logistics, and transportation businesses. One of the subsidiaries that you'll recognize from this, because we covered them in the last video, is Canadian Utilities. To me, this is one of the premier utility companies in Canada. It's probably the premier, them and Fortis. If we recall from the last video as a fun fact, Canadian Utilities is the longest uh, dividend increaser. If you look at the streaks of companies that have been increasing their dividends in Canada, Canadian Utilities is the top company. And they're of course a subsidiary of ATCO. So ATCO is the parent organization there. ATCO in and of itself, this company has raised their dividend for 27 consecutive years. So in relation that may seem a little bit uh, weak, but 27 consecutive years of increasing the dividend, that is something that we love to see when we're investing for passive income. If we do take a look at the share price, you'll note that a company in this space is not experiencing a whole lot of growth, kind of trading within a range. But in my opinion, if you are looking for a stock, this is actually current day, a very attractive one to look into with the stock dropping down a decent amount and the 4.3% starting yield. The stock trades for $40 Canadian, and that is the company Atco Group. Moving on to one of the classics, one of my all-time favorites, shareholder myself, I plan to be for as long as I can kind of see forward. It's the company Walmart, ticker WMT. And we're of course bouncing back to the US market with Walmart. The dividend on this one is 1.65% which I know you're probably thinking that must be very, very low for a dividend stock, which it is. I'll actually give a note on that. I can kind of speak on that now. If we do take a look at a metric here for Walmart's dividend, this is their trailing dividend yield, you'll note that the five-year average is up at 2.43%. So a much more normal, a very much more attractive dividend than the 1.65 that we're seeing today. You'll note that this is the case because if you look at how the stock has performed, the stock has done very, very well. It's been on a very, very nice run. And of course, this does happen from time to time, or this happens all the time, when you're looking at a particular stock, as a share price increases, as a stock continues to do very well, you will correspondingly see the dividend yield drop. And that's of course because I, I know in the case of Walmart, just as a, a teaching moment here, if you're if you don't understand this concept, Walmart pays currently an annual dividend of $2.16. So for every share of Walmart you own, you're gonna receive $2.16 per year. Now, as the share price increases, as the stock gets more and more expensive, as we've seen uh, with the share price there, you're still receiving $2.16. The dividend amount paid does not change, but the yield drops down. So the amount of money you have to invest to get those $2.16, that will absolutely creep up, which of course gives us that inverse relationship with the price and then the yield. But that's why we do see a low yield that by no means means that, that this is a bad dividend company. In fact, Walmart's a company that has been increasing their dividend for 47 years, which is just mind boggling to think about. I'm always reminded at just how large this company is when you look at their revenues. So how much the company is selling throughout the year. Over the past 12 months or the trailing 12 months, the TTM, Walmart's pulled in $553 billion in revenue. 
it's hard to fathom that much money, but it just goes to show how well established, how well built this company is. And they're actually doing a really good job current day of shifting to this digital presence with their e-commerce growth, things like curbside pickup, they are really adapting. And that's why I think overall, this is one of the best dividend stocks out there. The stock currently trades for $130. And of course, this is US dollars. This one trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker WMT. Moving back to the Canadian market for our final two selections in this video, we have the company Royal Bank of Canada. The ticker is RY. I always think on a side note, I always think the ticker should be RBC, which just logically makes sense, but it's ry.to. Today we are looking at a 4.26% dividend yield. And I know we love to talk about TD on the channel. I think it gets a lot more coverage than Royal Bank, but these two are of course neck and neck in terms of market cap and you could really split hairs between the two. Royal Bank is actually the largest bank in Canada. If you look at the market cap, uh, if you compared the market, the market cap on Royal Bank is 144 billion, which is about, I believe about $30 billion ahead of TD Bank as of today. But this company has paid dividends since 1870. And I'll take a moment just to let that sink in. 1870 is a long, long, long time ago. I can't even picture what things would be like in 1870, but Royal Bank has been out there paying dividends to their shareholders since. And if you take a look at the metrics, you do see, at least in comparison to the sector, comparison to the country being Canada or the TSX, we do see a more attractive yield. We're looking at 4.26, like I said today. Royal Bank currently has a payout ratio of 53%. So they're paying out, let's call it half of their earnings in dividends, which is very, very common for banks or for mature companies in general. You may actually see this be lower. They're not as crazily focused on growth because they've been through that phase, that growth phase of the company. They're this more mature, stable play. And I mean, it really goes to show with that dividend history there. One of the most reliable dividend options in Canada. The stock today trades for $101 Canadian with a very nice starting yield of 4.26%. To finish things off, we have another company in the finance space, in a sense, not the banks, but it is another Canadian stock. It is GWO, Great West Life, or the ticker is GWO. And this is, of course, one of the big insurance companies in Canada. You'll come across, for the most part, three, well, you will come across three major insurance companies in Manulife, Sun Life, and then Great West Life. Those are our three big players that will come across here. And today we're looking at a starting dividend yield of 6.46%. So the highest that we're covering on this video today, Great West Life, of course, specializes in life insurance here in Canada. You'll note that they actually do have business that expands to Europe. So they are a, a parent in Europe. You'll even see them in Asia. They do have a bit of diversity there. And we haven't covered Great West Life on the channel before, I don't, I don't believe, but we have covered Power Corp. And Power Corp Financial is actually the parent company. They own a 66% stake in Great West Life. And me personally, I always find that route a very interesting route of getting exposure to Great West Life, but you could always go straight to the point here. You can go invest in the company as itself, as it is its own independently traded stock. In terms of the dividend, you are looking at one of the more steady ones based on the industry it's in. You do see some steady dividend growth. So their five-year annual compound, compound annual growth rate is 6.08%, nothing crazy, but also right in line with what you can expect. When you're looking for a reliable company in a reliable space, I think that the finance space in Canada, despite the big blow up a decade ago, and a lot of people still not trusting the banks or the financial institutions, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think a lot of financial companies have learned from the past, at least you'd hope, and this one would fall into that category. You look at how the insurance companies and the banks are being very stingy about their numbers and their metrics and their ratios to make sure that they're all adequately covered. I think that Great West Life is overall a very reliable choice at the moment if you're looking for dividend income. Today, the stock trades for $27 USD. And like I said, you're looking at a 6.46% dividend. So guys, that is my part two 
of five additional dividend stocks that you can go out and buy to help build up your forms of passive income. What did you think of my selections? Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Do you have any better suggestions? If you do, you can feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I read all the comments. If you did enjoy this video, you can feel free to drop a quick thumbs up. I really mean it. That does help out the channel more than you know. If you appreciate the content, that is a great way of you helping me out. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, you should definitely subscribe too because we post videos like this every week. We actually usually post a couple videos a week, sometimes even three now, and we're gonna be posting more. So if you're looking for more content on the Canadian market, on dividend stocks, on the stock market in general, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And last but not least, we do have our investing academy. So if you are very new to the stock market or you feel you need some additional help, click the link down below and you can join our community. We have an online program that will take you through the entire process from start to finish, the terms, you name it, we'll do it all. That's the first link down below. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.